Hi, welcome. We are starting unit three. It's a pretty short unit, actually. And all we're really talking about are rational functions, their properties, and eventually we'll talk about solving their inequalities. Uh, so just to recall, what does rational mean? So we can break ra rational down and see it as ratio. And what is a ratio? We would think are fractions. So when we say rational functions, we really just mean our functions that are fractions. Okay, the most important thing to remember, though, is because we're working with fractions, now we have to worry about zeros in the denominator. And in fact, uh, so if you have zero in the denominator, we call this an undefined uh, function or point or whatever, but if it's zero over zero or infinity over infinity, we actually call this indeterminate. Um, factoring, so this is kind of a uh, going back, factoring is going to be a large part of solving rational functions. If you are struggling, now is the time to find that, that connection point, to go watch videos, to research it, whatever you have to do to understand how to factor. Um, you will definitely have to know at least how to factor quadratics. Remember, I do have a factoring video posted under the algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. The first thing we're going to talk about are asymptotes. Asymptotes are a line that a curve can approach, but um, it, it doesn't really cross it every now and then it can. But the main thing is that it's going to head towards some sort of infinity. There are three types that we're going to talk about. There's a horizontal, a vertical, and an oblique. Here's a visual representation of that. So, you know, our horizontal literally is that horizontal asymptote, and my graph can come up to it and approach it. My vertical, the same one. The new one that y'all might not have heard of until today is our oblique asymptote, which is our slanted, our diagonal asymptotes. Um, the formal definition of a rational function. The most common one that we know of is the reciprocal function, uh, the inverse function, kind of however you want to call that. And this is a typo on my PowerPoint. This should have said... Should grab a pen color y'all can see this should have said one over x my apologies okay so first thing let's talk about our vertical asymptote so the vertical asymptote would have n behavior that has this function so as i approach some value some actual domain value some actual c value then my graph is going to go to positive or negative infinity so that's what's telling me as i hit an asymptote my function has to go either to positive or negative infinity or both ways so that's all a vertical asymptote is here's that visual representation so you can see as they approach they are going to infinity versus a horizontal asymptote which tells me as x goes to infinity my uh, my that my function will approach a single value. So here's what that looks like. As you can see on the right hand side, my x is approaching positive infinity. But what is my function actually approaching? It's approaching the y value six. And again, on the left, my function is going all the way to the left, which means it's going to x approaching negative infinity. But as you can see on my graph, my, my value is my function is actually approaching the y value of six. Okay. So how do we actually solve for some of the things that we just talked about? How do we figure out domain if it's a rational function? How do we figure out where the vertical asymptote is, where the horizontal asymptote is? So I have some information for you. For a domain, you're going to assume all reals. That's the number one standard. You assume all reals. Then you find where it doesn't exist. So with rational functions, that's pretty it, that's pretty it. That, that's pretty easy because we just look for its discontinuities. You factor the rational function if that's possible. Then you set each factor term in your denominator equal to zero. If there are discontinuities in your domain, then that's how you write it. So for example, and this should have said in your denominator. For example, if you had six over x plus 2. Well, I can't factor this anymore, but I can set this equal to 0. So x plus 2 equals 0. That means at x equals negative 2, there's some sort of discontinuity. And so that means that for my domain, we could know that x would be equal to all reals except at negative 2. So that's what you would say for your domain. You would find just where it cannot occur because what would happen if I had plugged in negative or negative two into that denominator, it would have zeroed the denominator and we don't like zeros in the denominator. 
How do I solve for vertical asymptotes? They can occur at any of the real zeros in the denominator. However, there's a little bit of a trick to it. So the first thing you're going to do is factor. Again, you know, factoring is going to be here all, all the time in this unit. You cancel out common terms. If these are, uh, if you can cancel them out, these are actually called your whole. So it's still a discontinuity, but it's a single whole. And whatever remains in the denominator, set that equal to zero. And this is actually where your vertical asymptote lies. So for example, yeah, I'm just going to create an already factored uh, equation. Let's say we had x plus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 3. Well, what can I cancel out? Right here, I can cancel out this, right? So that means if I set my x plus 2 equal to 0, that means that x equals negative 2, there is a hole. And I could solve for the y value to find the actual coordinate point. Now, here, I've got x minus 3 that couldn't be canceled out, so I set that equal to 0. That becomes x equals positive 3, and this is now where my vertical asymptote lies. Okay, what about horizontal asymptotes? For these, you actually have to compare the numerator and the denominator, and you're comparing the highest degree. And what does that mean? The highest exponent, the highest power, the largest exponent. So. If your numerator's degree is less than your denominator's degree, that means you know your denominator is bigger, that means you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, so basically at the x-axis. If n equals m, that means your, new, your exponent on top, the biggest one, and your exponent on bottom are the exact same, then that means you look for its coefficients. And finally, if your numerator on top is bigger than the, or sorry, the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So this is just a little bit of kind of memorization. But to make it even easier, there's a trick we can use to memorize this. So if we know that our numerator is smaller and the denominator has a bigger one, we call this bobo. This means bigger on bottom equals zero. So that kind of helps us recall. If it's bigger on bottom, and we're talking again about the exponent, the largest exponent. So if it's bigger on bottom, then that means I have a horizontal asymptote at zero. When they are equal, we say this is Betsy. So that's bottom equals top, then I use my coefficient. And again, you use the coefficient of the highest degree. And finally, if your uh, degree on top is higher and is greater than m, then we call this bot u. And that means bigger on top is undefined. So if it's undefined, then we can't have anything happening there. That means there is no horizontal asymptote. So again, those three little terms are bobo, Betsy bought you. Bobo means bigger on bottom equals zero. Betsy means bottom equals top coefficient. Bachu means bigger on top undefined. However you want to memorize this is fine as long as you find a way to memorize this. You can't just recall horizontal asymptotes with magic. You have to have something in place to recall that. So make sure you memorize this page. Okay, so let's actually solve a couple of those rational functions. I think I'll have time for one or two before this video cuts off. So here, I'm going to find the domain of the uh, of this function, which you'll see, and the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So very first thing we're going to do is identify our domain. And what did I tell you about domains? We assume all real. So I'm going to assume that my domain ah, is currently all real numbers. But I have to look at its denominator. So that means I'm going to do x plus 3 is equal to... Zero. So that means at x equals negative 3, there's something funky happening. My job is to find out what that funkiness is. As of right now, that tells me that my domain can be equal to all reals except, except at x, come on, at x equals negative 3. So that's my domain. I know it's all reals except at x equals negative 3. But what happens if I want to figure out my vertical asymptote? We go back to that pattern. So is it factored out? Well, it's as factored as it's going to be, right? I can't factor it anymore. It's a simplified, it's in a simplified form. So then I look if I can cancel anything out. I can't cancel anything out, so that means there's no holes. We know that. So then I set my bottom equal, my denominator equal to zero, what's left, and we've already done that. So that tells me there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative three. There has to be. Okay, so then I want to look for horizontal asymptotes. So I use Bobo, Betsy, and Bachu. Okay, I look for the biggest 
degree of each one. So the biggest degree on top is one. The biggest degree on bottom is one. So is it bigger on bottom? No. Is it bigger on top? No. In fact, they both equal. So I look at its coefficient. The coefficient in front of each of these x's is one. One over one simplifies to one. Therefore, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Okay. I have a few more examples, but I want to come back to you guys with that on our very next video.